As always, at Charles Neal, bringing you a catch-up episode of sorts in that uh, you may have noticed that there was no episode last week of the podcast, and that's because um, I decided to take an impromptu vacation, took a couple of days off to relax and uh, visit a place I've never been to. Only needed a couple of days, but it kind of cut into the podcasting schedule, so this episode is going to be a catch-up of that. And then the usual stuff after that. Um, I did have a chance to catch up on a, a TV show a little bit. Um, I finished a season, still have one more to go, but I did make a pro- little bit of progress there. So with that being said, um, the reason for the delayed no podcast stuff for last week was that I took a couple days off to go to Portland, Oregon. So um, it's that time of year where, you know, you get to see a lot of fall colors, the um, atmosphere and the weather starts changing and that sort of stuff. I've never been there, so I uh, went to visit and overall it was a pretty good time. Um, did a couple of the usual things that are expected, so see the Japanese gardens, go around the city, go to the waterfront and things like that. Um, as far as other recommended things to do though, um, along the way to Multonoma Falls, we stopped at Bridal Veil Falls, a good easy hike to that one, kind of small. We didn't really get see go to stop and see every single waterfall, but um, because we were going over to Multonoma Falls, we stopped at Bridal Veil, it's on the way. Um, then we took a quick drive around Mount Hood, so we stopped at Rowana Crest Viewpoint. It was a little bit dry up there, so not as many trees and things to see up there, but it was a good view of the lake and surrounding area. Um, on the way back, uh, we were going to stop at the Timberline Lounge, Timberline Lodge, which I guess was where The Shining was filmed, but the weather got really cloudy and rainy and snowy and all that, so we couldn't make it all the way up to the lodge. So we just finished driving around the mountain and went back um, to the hotel. Um, otherwise, if the weather is good though, I do recommend making your way up there. It's supposedly a really good view of the city um, and a good drive around the mountain. So definitely recommend at least an early start if you know the weather may not may or may not be good. But if you know the weather is good, a definitely um, good drive around the mountain, um, Mount Hood to be exact. Um, as far as in the city, I do recommend going to the Japanese garden. It's nice and quiet, nestled in the uh, mountain, uh, very quiet and peaceful. Um, weather was a little bit overcast, but it made for a, um, a little bit of cool weather. It rained a little bit while we were there, but definitely um, worth seeing. So um, a good recommendation there and also while you're there if you have a chance right across the way on the, so on one hand on one side on the right side of the parking lot you have the Japanese gardens but across the parking lot behind the tennis courts is the international rose test garden so I also recommend going there just to see a whole bunch of different roses they have a small nice outdoor amphitheater not um a whole lot to do so it's more like if you're into roses and gardening and things like that then I recommend checking it out if you're not too much into that sort of stuff then it's not going to really make a big difference or matter to you um, as far as things to do in the city I do recommend checking out Keller Fountain Park it's a um, a nice waterfall set right in the middle of Portland so um, again not something to not much to do it's just a quick way to pass by and, uh, to check out as something that was built right in the middle of the city uh, same thing with the um, um, Tom McCall Waterfront Park. It's basically a super long waterway. Um, think of it along the lines of the um, waterfront park or uh, path or whatever that's in Chicago. Similar thing there. So 
both of those areas and but the one i guess the main difference is that the waterfront park um, does have different activities like a saturday market and things like that you have you know people walk taking their walks or morning jogs things like that so a lot of activity going on so definitely worth um checking that out for that um and then as far as um if you still have time or you know let's say you're packing up your days and you have time to do one more thing then i do recommend silver fall state park for this i do recommend a little bit of an early start and giving it a little bit more time because it is a bit of a drive to go around and especially if you're gonna um, take the full seven eight mile hike to see all the different waterfalls that are there um so that can take some time it is a bit of up and down of a path so you will need more time in the day um and good footwear take you know snacks and something to drink and all that unless you're going to see a couple of only a couple of falls so you know the i think it's the mid north waterfall the um winter falls the upper north falls a couple of them are pretty easy to get to short paths the upper north falls is probably the easiest one to get to the rest do have their ups and downs um so not terribly hard to get to but you do need to be in reasonable shape and be able to navigate um mildly wet um terrain so that is the only thing to or that's the main thing to consider for that but overall good views very beautiful um the mid north falls i think it was um you get a path that takes you behind the waterfall so you get a good view of the surrounding area from that point of view so i do recommend um things like that um and that's really the bulk of it um as far as food goes it is a good city for food so you do have two good donut chains to check out voodoo donuts and blue star donuts um i've had voodoo before and it's really good so we went to blue star this time and those were equally good so equal recommendations there um as far as pizza there's a place in the downtown area called the star um, it has a nice little arcade in there as well, but good uh, pizza, friendly staff, um, good you know beers on tap and things like that. So um, definitely a good place to check out, especially if you're in the city doing shopping and going around and things like that. And then if you want a quiet little you know out of the way joint that has good Mexican food, then I recommend Que Pasa Mexican Restaurant. If you search you know Que Pasa in Portland, it'll come up. It'll take you there. Um, same thing, small area, but it's a good place. They give good portion sizes for burritos and quesadillas and enchiladas and everything. So definitely recommend it. It was good food, very filling. And I mean, it feels like a lot, but it was also the right amount. So definitely uh, recommend that as well. And then um, the last place to check out or the last thing to do as far as is coffee, the most important thing. So I recommend Stumptown Coffee Roasters. They have a few locations around the city. Um, so good coffee, good staff and all that. Um, they have seasonal offerings as well. So if you, you know, for me, I always say if you like Starbucks but want to support your local coffee place or want something that's not Starbucks, then always look for things like that. And Stumptown Coffee definitely hits the spot. So that's really all there is for that. So in the um, show notes, I'll have a link to the blog post with a, a few photo highlights and a link to the YouTube playlist with all the videos that I took in one and then the itemized ones if you want to peruse them one by one and just watch the ones you want. So um, overall, um, a good trip, good, pretty quick. So, you know, we went Friday or went Wednesday night, came back Sunday afternoon. That's about all the time we needed. It was a pretty leisurely pace, so it's not like we had to rush to do much. Um, not we didn't have any particular order. We kind of just played it by ear as far as, a, as far as how the weather was gonna go and took it from there. Um, so if you want to, if you want more time, you can probably do a few more things. So if you want to do things like shopping or spend more time in the downtown area then more time will do that especially if you, you don't want to worry about when to wake up when to go to sleep and things like that or if you want to do things like bar hopping but still go see the sites and have all that time then um that's that is enough time maybe an extra day or two wouldn't hurt either um so with that being said i had a chance to keep watching the walking dead um daryl dixon season two and the penguin season one um both are doing really good now that in walking dead daryl and carol have met up 
we can kind of move forward. They have to find Laurent. So, so um, we're at the point where they want to take them him back to the U.S. So we'll see how all of that plays out as far as a final battle with that um, main priest guy. And then in the Penguin, it continues to be a really good show. And if I almost want to... I'm still giving a little bit of um, hold back as far as seeing how they stick the landing, but so far um, I'm kind of holding the penguin up as how do you make a superhero show without your titular character. So, so far we have nothing as far as Batman, Alfred, or anything like that. It's all been revolving around the penguin, the Maronis, the Falcons the mob and all of that stuff and that's it like you the the ba um, batman hasn't figured into any of it yet so part of me wonders if they're, that's going to be like the season finale or how they're going to tie it into the movie but um so far i mean they're doing i mean if they did that that's fine but it's like so far how do you hold create a superhero tv show without the superhero and this is a very good example of that um, I also had a chance to finish watching Deadwood season two, so I realized at some point that I never actually finished the show. I did watch the first season. I thought it was all right. Um, the second one feels like it was much better. Still kind of slow, but overall, the swear engine stuff was good. The politics of it was good. Um, the Oliphant stuff, the sheriff guy, was okay, but yet, but it was the kind of crappy to see about um, his brother's wife and her son. So we'll see how that plays out in the third season. So at some point, that is the plan is to watch the third season and then the movie. So um, overall, I kind of recommend it. I liked it as a Western, but like I said, it is kind of slow. But um, I'm glad they focus on all the bigger overarching stuff, but still kept, you know, like Calamity Jane and all the other side characters involved as well. Um, and then I've been, I'm continuing to play a real coaster, so um, I'm putting a post on social media as I put finish each level. I'm kind of just doing a release every week because so far it seems like um, it's something that's like a each level can takes maybe an hour or two depending on how expensive everything is. But um, I'm just I'm still uploading that in parts because it, it's not something that can be finished all at once. But um, over a few gameplays, the whole level can be completed. So um, I finished whatever that ice level was. So overall, not too bad. Um, recommend uh, playing that if you like a roller coaster game. And then I'm continuing to play Doom 3, a Doom 2 mod. Um, not too much to say there. I'm going to kind of hold off until I finish the game. But since I had a few days off from playing that, I um, have finished a couple or made a progress on a couple more levels. So keep looking out for those on the YouTube channel. Um, but overall, I'm impressed with the level size and the enemies and all that. So um, not much to say there until I finish it and then I'll give my final review. But I'm still having fun and I'm appreciating all the level design that goes on with it but that is all for this particular episode so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that the website has the links to the social media sites at headphonesneal.reviews the um youtube channel is youtube.com slash patel n01 for all the videos um audio version of the podcast and all of that good stuff. And of course, the Patreon is patreon.com slash n one to support the show, get early access, ad-free version of the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, uh, being a subscriber, supporter, all of that good stuff. And until next time.